Something crash landed in the fields. So Harvey went out to investigate. A spaceman in a spacesuit was crawling around out of his ship as if he was looking for something on the ground that he had lost, or maybe maybe he was just foraging. So Harvey approached him to help, and the spaceman stopped him with his mind and said, thought, No, do not touch me. I am a methane breather. Last time I visited this planet, it was vastly different than it is now. Um, uh, for your own safety, I must remain in this suit. Beyond the shores of this world, every other life form you encounter in space will consider you as a food source, nothing more than meat. Therefore, I am filled with nanites that, if breathed in, will disincline you from thinking of me as meat. But as oxygen breathers, the exposure to my nanites might have strange effects upon you. The nanites understand normal life forms, the ones I generally encounter. Oh, no worries about that, sir, said Harvey. You could not look more disgusting. Definitely not meats. It must be the iron core of your planet. I bet it makes your planet and its inhabitants oxygen breathers, unique in all the known universe. Yes, indeed, what a find, he said, thought gleefully. Suddenly the spaceman was shot by someone out in the distance. Oh! He struggled forward and grabbed an object that was lying on the ground. It must have been what he was retrieving when Harvey had approached. Then something happened, and the man was gone. The spaceman was gone. The ship was gone, and the field looked, well, untouched. Harvey felt around on the ground where the spaceman had been shot, and while he could not see the dampness, he could feel it. Then the next second, Harvey was in the kitchen, talking to Charlene. You wouldn't have believed it, Harvey said to his wife. Well, said his wife, Charlene, you definitely have blood on your face from somewhere. Harvey looked in the mirror, but he could not see any blood. Charlene began changing. Oh, oh. Harvey thought, oh my God, it must be the spaceman. But then he realized it was his wife, but, but no, not his wife. Horrified, Harvey tied her up and went for help. Harvey was immune, but he was a carrier. It was the strangest thing. Everywhere he went, zombies would start showing up. Uh, the closer people, uh, and as more and more zombies began showing up, um, people began to gather for their own protection, or so we thought. But the nanites and the pheromones that hit the zombies released had strange effects upon us that we're only, we are only now starting to realize. But this only complicated matters to the point where there was a time when nearly every family in Dimbledorm had at least one zombie among the ranks. It seemed that a family would sooner sacrifice a newborn than let harm come to one of their zombies' loved ones. The need to protect became paramount, overriding all other concerns. Of course we did not kill them. We kept them locked up in their rooms, forcing them to go cold turkey until their immune systems could rid their bodies of the zombie virus, or so we thought. Um, uh, actually, it was so that the nanites could adapt within them and do for them the same things they did for the spaceman, help them to maintain their equilibrium and balance, good health and vigor. Then we would have our father, mother, son, or daughter back, and all would be well. At least that was the plan, yet... From the very start, people cheated. Unfortunately, some families could not stick with the plan and instead began conking out the hired help and then conking out complete strangers and throwing them into the room with their loved one and in this way continued to provide their loved ones with their medicine. Confusing the nanites with an overload and intermingling of uh, 
data and DNA and um, things that were technically beyond Harvey's perception or understanding. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, so that the nanites could not get a baseline from which to begin repairs. Cold turkey was required. But like so many things back then, we knew it, and yet we did not know it. Uh, so many things would seem to be guiding us. Um, it was all subconscious, beyond our perceptions, confusing. Because the nanites provided all the nourishment the person would ever require, even th through zombies, as they are now called symbiotic human nanite life forms, or enhanced human nanite life forms, no longer required nourishment, their loved ones, not knowing this, felt an overwhelming urge to care for them, and feed them, and provide for them, and so... They continued to feed them. Uh, it got so that people were afraid to leave their homes. Good, decent folk were hunting each other, not for themselves, but for their loved ones, capturing anyone they had a chance to. It was as if their loved ones were giving off pheromones that overrode the thinking processes of their loved ones. Must feed the zombie was the overriding uh, impulse shared by many across the valley. You see, if the Nanite Collective had a baseline of the person to work from, um, it could use the fresh meat to rebuild and sustain the patient, but lacking a baseline, it was chaos. With every imaginable mistake being made in rooms across Dimbledore, people within people, uh, um, <laughs> an extra head or two, body parts popping up, and out of the person in the strangest places, uh, a leg where an arm should be, a head where a leg should be. It took a while for the Nanite Collective to learn its new environment, and uh, it was all sorted out in the end, for the most part. But errors were either corrected or incorporated into the baseline, as the town seemed to fill up with the strangest peculiars, and yet no one seemed to notice. And now, thinking back on it, uh, the age of zombies came and went in the blink of an eye, thought Harvey. And life in Dibbledorm returned back to normal. Uh, whenever Harvey would think about his encounter with the spaceman, he would smile, his thoughts would go elsewhere, and then, then uh, he'd move on to other things. Uh, then we zoom out, revealing Dibbledorm is all within a snow globe and is being displayed. Oxygen breathers, a life form found on a planet in the Trevelyan Arch Nebula called Earth. Then as we pull even further back, we are able to see millions of billions of snow globes and millions of billions of, uh, of museum environments housing millions of billions of snow globes. Uh, the immensity of the project was uh, incomprehensible. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>